Good day everyone and welcome to another video in the Stoneworks Basics series. And if there is something I feel like I'm qualified to talk about, it's nuclear reactors in Stoneworks. I mean, I have like 7 ships that I've used nuclear reactors on and that have worked perfectly. Although during testing they blew up sometimes, but who cares? Now today we are going to be working on figuring out how actually only this thing works, this big box with a bunch of rows in it. And we are also going to be going over some of the theory behind this and how this really works. We aren't going to be building any steam components or stuff like that because we are going to be going over that in a later video in around two weeks. But with that done, let's jump right into it with the first segment of the video and that being, is it actually a good decision for you to have something like this in your ship or in your creation? So is it actually for you? For this segment of the video I will be using one of my nuclear ships as the background so you have something to look at while I try to explain this. Now first let's go over why I myself picked nuclear because I used to use a lot of modular engines in my builds before I found out how nuclear worked. And then we will try to go over the pros and cons of this whole thing. Now I myself picked nuclear because firstly I didn't like the smoke, secondly I'm not really a guy that likes funnels on ships, like some ships manage to pull it off very well but some ships just look bad with them. And most importantly, I love the range and also I love how quiet it is, which that actually shouldn't be a thing because on real ships the thing that actually moves, the pistons or the turbines, they make a lot of noise where in stoneworks the pistons just don't make any noise i have no clue why that happens but now let's go over the pros and the cons so first with the cons and the problems with this whole thing firstly it is rather difficult to get the resources this obviously only applies to career but one rod will cost you about nine uranium ingots one uranium ingot will be around 25 uranium ore and those things can take a while to mine plus the whole transferring process and moving them between places it just takes up a lot of time and this basically ends in the fact that six rods which is the normal amount of rods i usually use and most people usually use those can take up to 1350 uranium ore which that that takes a long time to mine also it's not only the mining that is rather difficult but also it's the building steam components and things like that can be really difficult to use and they have some of their problems which i will aim to solve in that video that i will try to release in two weeks and now finally, the most well-known problem there is, is that if this thing causes an accident, it's gonna be bad. That's why safety on nuclear ships is very much important. But now, let's go over the good thing about this. So firstly, these things can get really powerful. Like, I am able to get this ship around 47 knots, and I've seen even better. Now secondly, that's the most important part and that's why I'm guessing most people who do it, do it. And that is the range and how long this will last. It is rather difficult to calculate how long, but the last time I attempted to actually count how many hours this would last, it went up to around 1000 and that's at the worst. Now that we made it through this section, you should now know if you really want to use it on your ship 
and if you want you can go on and continue on with this video. So let's now get on with actually doing it. First let's pick out the components we will need. We will obviously need a block of some kind. Then we will need some tracks and some track base. I will use the linear tracks. Then we will need all of the nuclear components. So we will need the controller rod, the fuel assembly rod and the fuel rod. Now we will need a throttle lever, a function block and a fluid spawner. We can also get windows just to make it look better. So first let's make a plate here. Doesn't have to be big. And before we start, let's first get over some theory. If you want to go right to the building, you can skip using the chapters in this video. Now this works on the system that if a fuel rod is inside these rods, a reaction is going to start that is going to be heating up water around it. And this water will go into boilers. There it will heat up water in the boilers and turn it into steam. This steam will drive turbines or piston. Then there are also these controller rods, which these slow the reaction down or stop it and make it not explode. Now that we're finally done with me rambling about this stuff, let's actually get to building it. So for this we are going to be building a reactor that has six rods in this configuration. But I will be going over more configurations later. So you will put your fuel assemblies down like this. Then you will build up three blocks. And put your nuclear controller rods here. There can be more of them but I like just putting three here. Also you can definitely put your reactor on the side. I haven't tried building it upside down but on the side works, so if you need to save some space, that definitely works, that is a way of doing it. Now we will start with our track, we will build the pillar out of this, then we will get a linear track base, then we will put some blocks in, and we will put the nuclear rods in. The important part about this is this pointy thing should be facing down. Now we are done with this. Let's make the casing to encase this thing. Now you can make the casing as big as you want. But if you build it small, that means that there won't be much water and it will be rather easy to heat up. If you build it big, there is going to be a large amount of water and it will take a long time to heat up. So if you have many boilers, it may be good to go with big, but if you have just a few, it may be better to go with small. Now here in Stoneworks, to show off the power of our reactors, we like to put in windows on the side, even though this wouldn't really happen in real life, I don't think so. Now we are done with the reactor itself, and let's go over some of the logic. So first we are going to add a throttle lever, connect it to our slider. Now if this outputs 1, it's going to push it down and click these rods into place. If we want we can also use a door microcontroller or a numerical switch box if we want to connect it to a button. That would look like this. And there is just one here. And the logic would be like this. One will go into on. And the button will go into switch signal. Which then that will go to the slider. For ease of use I will use this. Now that's that. But I told you that we need these rods to slow the reaction and not make it melt down. Well how do we use these? We have our insertion target and here in the insertion target we will basically be telling it how much we want to slow the reaction. Now we want it to go to up to around 300 degrees. 
we are going to use a simple function block for this. But we can't connect this to all of the rods. So we are just going to add a bunch of add blocks. Here we can actually get the dial. And we will need to divide this by 6. Because we have 6 rows. And this will get us our average. Now let's input this also to the function. And here we will just simply do x divided by 1100. Connected to insertion target. And this should keep it safe. So let's go ahead and spawn it. But as you can see we have a certain problem. That is we forgot our water. Now let's select the fluid spawner to be fresh water and spawn it now. This should now work. Let's do toggle and that's gonna click in. Boom. It's in. And obviously I am using infinite electricity for this. But now it's going up. The only thing that's left is for us to wait. And now our average temperature is 295 degrees celsius. So that's perfect, nothing is blowing up and it's all working. So now we have a working nuclear reactor. Let's go over the thing I said and that is... How do I make it bigger? So if you want a bigger reactor... The best way to do it is take the 2x3 reactor and just duplicate it a bunch of times. And... Yeah, that's how it works. It's just really simple. But I have to warn you, doing it like this, even if you completely cover it, it's not going to work. It's gonna melt down and it's gonna cause you a bunch of headaches. So now, we have a nice functioning nuclear reactor. The only thing that's left is steam, and that's what we're going to do in the next video, because... That's because steam is not really a nuclear thing. It can be connected to diesel furnaces, coal furnaces and things like that. So it's not specifically linked to a nuclear reactor. So that's why we're doing it in the next video of Stormworks Basics. So welcome to the end of the video. I'm surprised you made it through all of this time of me rambling about nuclear reactors in Stormworks. Now this design was rather similar to the design that Mr. and Jersey made. And that's because I kind of learned my nuclear reactors from him. But in his video he also did things with steam and things like that. So I wanted to make a video that is more specifically in-depth only about nuclear reactors. Not really about steam or anything like that. Now, so if you've watched any of my videos before this one, you may notice that my voice is kind of different. That is because I decided to use noise suppression for this video so you couldn't hear my keyboard and my mouse clicking and everything like that. So tell me in the comments if that is actually good or bad. And now finally, if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more of my videos, Maybe consider subscribing, it's gonna help me and also you. But obviously no pressure. Now without further ado, see ya.